Uh, that's so. Your host in this, dude. Wait, what? Oh, okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to Brickfeed episode 99. I'm LJ. I am Vessel. And, and that's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just us. Yeah. Funny story about that. It's not Nobody very funny. Else can be on. Kenny's here, but he's just like refusing to be on because he doesn't, you know. He doesn't carve out his Legos anymore. He's okay. forsaken the Lego We're episode community. 99 and you're saying Legos. How dare you? It was, it was for the meme, dude. I was just memeing. You're a meme. All right. Someone do me a favor. Just, I am. Uh, just check check how it sounds. And I, I know it's fine, but... Audio, audio is all messed up. It sounds 144p quality. Uh-huh. Got it. So I just learned because I, I had the video like playing... It will live caption us. I had caption. I, I had subtitles on uh, for another video, and I just saw it. It was like subtitling you, but we're live. It doesn't have a subtitle track. That's crazy. Thinking emoji. It's weird. It's, it's crazy, man. That's some YouTube crazy does. Tech. What YouTube does. It's weird. The tech of the future. Pretty soon they'll be able to type what we say before we say it. I know, right? Stinking robots. We've got to hook our brains up to a com computer via Ethernet cable. And it'll be able to read our thought processes. Okay, we're done. You're done. Learned I had the video, <laughs> like, playing in the list. <laughs> I didn't say it was good. <laughs> I just said it did it. <laughs> anyway. So, yeah. It's just us. It's not a cool story. It's not 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 anything different. Was it the last time it was just you and I, Meso? Brickfeed as well. I think you. I think you're right. I know it was two episodes ago, because we were talking about Jack Skellington and then Var doing near the end. I yeah. it was about like Voltron and X and Var were there for that. Oh, was X there? So I'm not on the X Wing theme. Yeah, for Voltron, he was. Oh, okay. All right. Well, uh. So, LJ, did you get any Lego sense this week? <laughs> well, Meso, I didn't actually. But I probably will pretty soon. Have you built any of the Lego sets that you still have to build? <laughs> well, okay. So, I laugh. Remember how I listed off all those Lego sets that I had in boxes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't build any of those. But the ones that I mentioned that I had that I could not discuss yet, I have built several of those. So, it's kind of a 50-50. You know, Interesting. Is it right? I mean, I like I'll get around to it, but I want to. You're a maddening uh, person. <laughs> I want to build them, but do something like fun and special with them. Like in my head, I was thinking, all right, one of these Ninjago casts, I'll take the Ninja Knight crawler. Is it? Yes. Okay. Good. I'll take Lloyd's car, and I'll build it on stream while we discuss Ninjago. I thought you know that'd be kind of fun, kind of different. But we haven't had a chance for that. We've had too much interesting stuff to talk about. So it will happen. Most people don't buy sets to make an event out of them. Most people buy them just to build them. Well, yeah, that's why I bought them too. It's just, I think, at this point, it'd be fun to incorporate them into something interesting. I think I'm going to buy a poly bag and then not build it for a year so I can do Meso Builds Poly Bag Live Spectacular event. My goodness, and guys! It sounds like a really good plan. <laughs> Why? <laughs> okay, it's my property. I can do what I want with my property, Meso. Yeah, Thank you, you very it's, much. It's, it's, I'm free to criticize <laughs> you for it. You're a collector yeah. of boxes. That's what you are. I'm not. Can you can can you review every box ever made? Can that be your new goal? I think Why in good the good world would I ever do that? Listen, I have reviews that I'm oh, working on. It's I'll just just rebox reviews. <laughs> okay, listen. I have things that I'm reviewing, and boxes are not one of those things. Mm. Listen, what are you I, reviewing, LJ? Tell the fans! How's about I wait until I have videos done and ready to release, Whoa. so I, we don't have a... Uh, Freaking... What? Mega Thunder outside. Huh. Thunder! And Thunder! Do, do not! I hate that song. Lightning and the Thunder! I hate, <laughs> I hate that song so much. Not only do I yeah. not like the song itself, 
I don't think it's a particularly Lightning good song. And thunder. At least not to me. Thunder. <laughs> it's like it's not a. F I don't like the song personally. But I also hate how much it's played. I hate how much Imagine Dragons are played. Mm -hmm. Like I don't necessarily dislike them, but I've heard their songs enough times to be sick of them. Like that. Um... I love Imagine Dragons. I just find it <laughs> very upsetting that they have stooped so low to make such a lazy song. It's like the the. It's very comparable to lazy rap, which I always bag on as like my least favorite genre of music. You just kind of have to talk like this with your voice so low and the oh. music plays so, in the background. Rap in general. You're talking about things like Lego and sets and mini figure packs and okay. stuff like that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you know, things things like that. You just kind of have to spit words without even speaking. <laughs> yeah. Okay, full Someone disclosure. Someone right, Cass says... Messo, seriously, when are you making a mumble rap song? I'll mix it for you. Listen, I'll I'll do it. I just don't know. I'm just not like a songwriter. Someone <laughs> writes me a song, I'll freaking rap it. Come on, I'll do it live. Oh my gosh, do not encourage him, please. But no, I I really the patron chat, which you can join for one dollar a month. Patron illustrious var says TTV sucks. Hmm. Okay. Got it. Thank you, illustrious var. I like this comment from the YouTube live chat. Uh, Nexalo said, Thunder makes me want to get struck by lightning. <laughs> I like that a lot. <laughs> uh, me too. <clears throat> but no, I, I, I know. Uh, the, the repetition is really obnoxious. I hate how, how often those songs are played. It's like Havana. I really hated that song because it's Havana, just like, no, Stop it! Stop! I don't need, I know what the song is, I don't need you to replicate it. It's so obnoxious. It, it just, all the time, I hate listening to it. Ah! Um, the quiet one, who's Walt, I believe, says someone did write you a song, that's how it's called the Paraka Rap. The trigger, the tracer, the drift of the song. You're about this close to being muted, buddy. Slowly, all that makes Paraka. Yeah. Uh huh. Paraka. <laughs> I don't want a single person, either present nor listening in the future, at all, to consider this one of Mess's defining moments. <laughs> Is that a defining moment? <laughs> Start all right, like, or at least a moment. Are for bleeding. The year. Oh well. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, yeah. You know, I, I already got the moment of the year. You no, ain't you gonna do not. anything. Uh, no, you did not. Daily reveal. No, no. I will flip You're a table. Poser, I will no. Screw that. I am not going to lose to to you. Like saying hello, this is Haley. Nah, that's not happening. I mean, you haven't exactly done much else. Okay, TTE. Did you forget that happened? You were you were gone for a fourth of the year and then improv a lazy April Fool. Oh joke my gosh, improv. Do you know how much time else? I had left, Meso? <laughs> Do you know how quickly I had to assemble things for that to work? I wanted to have a much bigger April Fool's joke. I wanted to have an Infinity War April Fool's joke where we got several different community heads together for this giant mass community April Fool's joke where we're all fighting against a central force, but I got fired! <laughs> Yeah, yeah, laugh it up, buddy. <laughs> laugh it up. That moment is mine. Two years running, buddy. Two years. I'm going for the big three, and then you can have all the top moments you want, but the three is mine. I I'm just saying you were gone for a fourth of the year and then have done nothing the other fourth of the year. Meanwhile, who's put out, like, funny moments and, like, a top ten... And I'm, spoiler alert, about to put up another toast. Oh, well, aren't you the big cheese <laughs> who's been editing our new Let's Play and making interesting Where's content that? that people are going to have, they're, they're going to be looking forward to it as soon as I announce it. It's going to be some good stuff, buddy. It's totally fair. For anyone who hasn't watched the Danganronpa Let's Play, LJ has been working hard on that. And there's Correct. some top 10 potential in there, too. Oh, <laughs> there funny is. Stuff. Trust me. If I... I it's unfortunate that we're not going to be able to get a particular moment in this series out before the year ends. 
because it's 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 possibly one of the funniest moments that I have been involved in in a very long time. <clears throat> oh, is it the is it the one I'm thinking of? It's the it's probably the one you're thinking of. It's the one that I cut out so we could watch like the independent snippet. Will that really not be up for the years over? Uh, unless we can consistently release an episode every week, I don't think so. No. I mean, we should we should do that even if we don't have abridged versions. Fair enough. I'll look into it, but um, but yeah, no. I, I've been doing plenty, buddy. It just hasn't come out yet. Well, except for the the mm -hmm. uh, let's play, which has been coming out. True. Yeah. But you know what has been coming out? Lego. Lego news. <laughs> No, oh, gee, I didn't see that coming. Zinger segue of the year. Top 10 segues of 2018. No. Well, dude, what do we have to talk about this? <clears throat> this okay. So we uh, we have quite a bit to talk about. We have a lot of set reveals, including Harry Potter, The Porg, A Car, and The Lego Movie 2. So let's go ahead and start. A car? With... No. He's been revealed. Oh, my God. Gosh, yes. In fact, Jim Cummings is here now. He's going to reintroduce <laughs> a car as a re-release set to celebrate Bionicle's 18th year. Can you believe it? That's crazy, Actually, bro. Yeah. Eight, 18 years of Bionicle is pretty crazy, dude. Yeah. In fact, actually, so it's <laughs> kind of funny we mentioned this because today, the day we're live streaming and recording, July 29th, 2018, is two years since the announcement canceling Bionicle Generation 2. Wah, wah, wah. Okay, we're done with that. <clears throat> anyway, so let's go ahead and talk about the first thing, and that is the new Harry Potter castle. Um, it is set number 71043 Hogwarts Castle. It is a direct to consumer set, meaning it's not it's not gonna be in retail stores, it's gonna be in Lego Thunder in the Thunder. <laughs> Lightning and Thunder outside. Go on. <laughs> it's going to be direct to consumer. It has six thousand and twenty pieces and it's gonna retail in the United States for four hundred dollars. I feel like it's a cool set. Mm -hmm. Um but I will I will echo a comment that X Trooper made off air hmm. in our private chat if I can if I can dig it up again. Okay, we're talking about how good of a deal it is because it's over six thousand pieces and it's licensed, which is true. But X's response was six k pieces isn't really that hard of a selling point when a third of them are the same ten pieces, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but it's like I I kind of. Sympathize with that viewpoint because it's a mic. Again, the big source of contention is the micro scale model. Let's get that out of the way first. The winner doesn't know about that yet. It is micro scale. Um, it only has four mini figures into the Hogwarts founders, and they don't really work in the scale of the set. They're standalone figures. So that means everyone's favorite. What do you even call them? Micro, yeah, micro figures, which mm -hmm. are basically just glorified statues. And the castle is built to scale around them. So everything's in a super miniaturized format. If that doesn't bother you, then great. If it does, well, then you're kind of out of luck. Now, I respect it on the point that they were able to make a much more detailed castle because it's micro scale. As you can see, you have tons of crazy stuff. You have the staircase. You know, the Great Hall, Umbridge's office, the potions room, all the iconic Hogwarts locations are there in micro scale. The reason this is significant for the model of the set is because it's kind of... It's repetitive and it's not that interesting in the way of pieces, which is the point X is going to make. Like, I look at this and I zoom in and I'm like, wow, this is a really cool Hogwarts. But, like, how much of it is just the same stuff repeated? How many tiny tan pieces do you have? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I'm just being one of those people, you know, one of those nitpickers. It's a great display model, um, and it's one I would like to get, if possible. I just wouldn't pay that amount of money for it. Mm -hmm. No, I can totally understand that. Um, I'm sure that for Harry Potter fans, this is a really, really fantastic set. 
Especially oh, given yes. that, according to you, these minifigures that I've got up on screen are the founders in the story. Yes, it's a big deal, the Hogwarts founders. If there's one complaint I have is that Gryffindor's sword looks kind of... Uh... It's, it's just the <laughs> generic sword model. It looks really dumb. The, the, the key element of Godric Gryffindor's sword is that it has a very defining ruby hilt that is always mentioned. Um, when people look at it, and that does not have that at all, like all this bit right there, that's a that, that's God Gryffindor's sword engraving. Uh, okay, sword. come on, that's it's ah. its defining trait. They always mention it almost every time it shows up. Like you can Fuck take me. you can take up a red sharpie and fix this issue in a heartbeat. <laughs> LJ advocating non-purist Lego set building. Well, witchcraft is this? <laughs> witchcraft, get it? Because we're exactly. talking about Harry Potter. Okay. Yeah. No, I mean the set's great. I I think that it is incredibly well well designed, well built. It looks fantastic. I'm not a Harry Potter fan. Like, I don't hate it, don't get me wrong. It's just, it's not a theme that I follow at all. So it's like, you know, it, it looks great. I have no interest in it, pretty much at all. Wadden posted this interesting thing that I had not noticed as of yet. They actually appear to use giant stickers in the staircase room to simulate the various rooms of Hogwarts Castle. Like there's That's and, and the paintings, it's very clever. That's super clever. Unless you're someone that hates stickers, in which case it's going to be super annoying because there's so many of them and they're huge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, double-edged sword. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, do you have anything else to say about it? Um, Walk says, sure they could have made a new, more detailed mold. They will never reuse again." Sounds great. I mean, just make a sword that has a gym in it, and I'm sure you'll find some use for that in a medieval theme. The inevitable castle reboot. Mm. Sure. You know, not every sword must be generic gray. So the story says, yeah, like index on now, yeah. Womp, womp, womp. Have Other than that, not really. It's a cool set. But again, no microscale controversy. Your mileage may vary. Would you prefer smaller scale Hogwarts with actual minifigures or larger scale comprehensive Hogwarts with micro figures? In the end, you must make that call yourself. But I respect what they did. Yeah, I think it looks good. So, uh, The set is going to be available for LEGO VIP on August 15th. But the set fully comes out, I'm fairly confident, yeah, September 1st for everyone who isn't VIP. So, that squares that away. Pick one of these smaller items to talk about next. Okay. Well, I mean, there isn't really a small item that we have to Let's discuss. Let's talk about Nightmare Batman. Okay, well, that's that's the only small item. <laughs> I don't even know where I put the pictures. Uh, Find it, I'll take one, dude. Maybe I didn't have the the picture for that. You totally did, but I'll repost. No, it. no, 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 no. I have because... the picture. I just didn't put in an exploit. Oh, I see. Yeah, because yeah, I have yeah. a lot. I have a lot of pictures. This is apparently something that Lego used to do. That they're they're have they've stopped doing, and then they're they're bringing back. Apparently, these kind of minifigure packs with accessories, which is cool. I respect it a lot, but, 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 of all things, <laughs> Nightmare Batman. Yeah. <laughs> Why? And it's rich, the kind of accessories they include. They have, like, a gun that has a, gest a jester clown thing below it, even though the Joker isn't a factor in this vision at all. Uh, the parademons... <laughs> They're like, and the description on Lego Shop at Home is, it's just hilarious. They're like, 
recreate the famous nightmare scene from the Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice movie. First of all, it's end of 2018. Who still cares about Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice? Second of all, it's 2018. Whoever, like, thought highly of Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice at all. Thirdly, it's 2018. Who liked the nightmare scene? That was, like, the most critically panned scene in the entire movie because it was horribly irrelevant and also unfitting for Batman as a character. Um, it had iconic costuming, I guess, but honestly, the Batman in this accessory pack doesn't even really look like Nightmare Batman. Well, like, I kind of get what they were going for with the cloth, but, like, I don't recall Nightmare Batman wearing bright neon green shorts. Okay, come on. Those are obviously olive green. But yeah, yeah it's, a little, it's a little bright. <laughs> oh, come on. It's not a good costume. It's not a good costume at all. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's just me. I'm not, I'm not a fan of it. <laughs> not a fan at all. And yeah. even the parademons don't exactly scream BVS Justice League parademons. Justice. They look very comic booky. Oh yeah, I still haven't seen Justice League. Whoops. Oh yeah, we should watch that. We should. Not anytime soon though. I'm gonna be gone. <laughs> oh yeah. Huh? Right. Yes. But yeah, no. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to give it a token mention. Yeah, I got nothing interesting to say about it. But it is going to be. It, it was revealed on Lego Shop at Home. It's gonna retail in the United States for twelve ninety nine, so $13, and it will come out on August 1st in Europe and September 1st in North America. $13 for three average minifigures from a horrible scene from a terrible movie. But what is exclusive, no, my no son? Brainer. It's a no-brainer. Fun, fun fact, actually, and let me go ahead and double-check this before I shove a foot in my mouth. $13 for three minifigures, one exclusive and some pieces. To mm -hmm. put that in perspective, that is the price, roughly the price, of the Gresh set from 2009. Now, yeah, $12.99. Um, why, why Gresh? <laughs> it, it was just the first one that came to mind, dude. Isn't that, oh, okay, good. Because I was like, also, wasn't that also the price of the Mystica? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yes, it was. It was j literally just the first example that came to mind. All right. Another way I would put it is thirteen dollars. That's like three collectible minifigure packs plus a dollar. So in that sense, it's not overpriced if you consider the accessories worth a dollar. It's just a matter of minifigure desirability. I suppose. But not something I will Let's spend. Talk about the Venom set. Oh yeah, that's another picture I forgot to add. But here it is. Oh my god. I am actually incredibly excited for this set. I don't know if I will get it, but it looks unbelievable. Tell us a little bit about it, Bessa. Well, it's a Spider-Man mech fighting a Venom mech. Okay, this was a mistake. Alright, so this was revealed <laughs> by... And, 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 and two of the mechs have something in common with each other. Yes, Neither of them articulation. Knees. Okay, thank you. Anyway, <laughs> it's a Lego Marvel superhero set that is going to be coming out in 2019. Uh, well, actually, so, okay. <laughs> it's a 2019 set that will release, according to this, on December 1st. So it comes out 2018, but for the holiday season. It was revealed on Gizmodo ahead of uh, SDCC. It's set number 76115, Spider-Man Mech vs. Venom Mech. So it's incredibly creative as far as the name is concerned. It's going to retail for $50 in the United States, 5-0 and has approximately 604 pieces. This is a absolutely fantastic set for Spider-Man fans because it's got a new Spider-Man minifigure, not based off the movie, but kind of one of the new cartoons. It's got a Venom minifigure, which, you know, if you're a fan of Venom, you'll like that, especially given the new movies coming out this year. It's got, you know, Aunt May. Who cares about Aunt May? The, the one that people are really going to care about is Spider-Gwen. She's finally you getting a minifigure. Spider? Hmm? You mean Ghost Spider? Spider Gwen. Ghost Spider? The proper name. What? <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Ghost right. Spider. She had another name? Yeah, I think Ghost Spider's a new thing. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's new. Uh, okay. July 12th, 2018. They're, they're, they're rebranding of Spider Gwen. <laughs> I mean, I, it makes spider. sense. It makes sense because she can't go around the city fighting bad guys and that, What's your name, Spider? She becomes Spider Gwen. Yeah. yeah, you're right. It doesn't really work. <laughs> <laughs> that that makes sense. It's just news to me. But yeah, she's getting Alpha minifigure. the Me just donated two dollars on YouTube Super Chat. Well, thank you. First, first of all, thank you. Second question, he he says, so who gets the donations? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. If you ever want a reliable way to donate to us, Patreon is the way to go. Because instead of $2, you can do $1 and you can get in our cool Discord server. But we still greatly appreciate the $2 donation. I, we'll I find out greatly appreciate it. it. Thank you for your, your kind thinking and generosity. Most certainly. But yeah, no, these mechs are amazing. The, itself. Uh, the Venom oh, yes, mech, truly. particularly, uh, is outstanding. It looks so cool. Probably one of the better Lego mechs they've released recently as far as a small scale is concerned. It looks very, very representative of Venom himself. The face, in particular, is very well done. Mm -hmm. And am I wrong, or is that the CCBS Star Wars shoulder armor used for the head and shoulders? Um... Oh. Probably the I shoulders. I don't know about the head. But it's a it's a safe it bet. It looks like the same kind of piece. Yeah, I think it's a safe bet. I'm just uns unsure because it's a very creative use for the head. Definitely. But the, the Venom mech is absolutely I have no wonderful. complaints about the Venom mech. Well, I have one complaint. About yes, the yes, Venom. yes. Knees, get over it. I will never get over it. <clears throat> Ugh. It's just the kind of thing you got to keep mentioning till it gets changed. But... You know, other than that, is a cool mech, and then the spider mech is... It yeah. exists. Yeah, I'm not too interested in it. It's got some new web molds. Got... Yes, just what I always wanted from Spider-Man, the web claw. <laughs> Come on. Truly, truly going to be very useful at grabbing things. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Holy guacamole. No, I'm just, I'm just joking. Ah, uh, <laughs> okay. It looks cool. Yeah. Does, does he have a web launcher as well on the other hand? Yeah, it, it's it's the, the small shooter, but I... <laughs> I think this is a good set. I'm not too interested in the Spider-Mech. The, the Spider-Man minifigure, however, oh, looks it? fantastic. Um, it looks ugly. But I, I, I agree that the lack of knee articulation is an issue. Wait, fifty dollars for six oh four pieces? Curse you licensing fees. I'm boycotting. Put five zero for six oh four. That lines up. It's actually a better deal. Nope. Needs to be five oh four. Okay, we're moving on. <laughs> Am I wrong? Is that would that not like that's what I'm meaning? <laughs> Don't even it's a better deal. It's a decent deal, but five oh four would be the equivalency. Six oh four for fifty. Yeah. Actually. Yeah, it's a better deal. Actually, never mind. You... I just realized my foul. Yeah, you dingus. Okay, we're moving <laughs> yeah, on. Well, well, let me distract. Ben Gantz posted a Voltron mech with knees. Let no, me we talked about Voltron last time. You mook. But, but it's a mock. It's a... <laughs> yes. You really, really want to pay more for less, <laughs> do you? Dark talking to his message. Two plus two is 11. <laughs> 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 I'm tired. Okay. Uh, I'm tired. Evidently. Wait, what? Ben Gatt says this is the official set, but with knees added. Is it really? Uh, yeah, is it? Um, yeah, okay. Uh, uh, fair enough. I, I'm not going to post the pictures right here because I don't want to focus on it too heavily, but Chubby Bots, uh, C H U B B Y space B O T S. Apparently added knee articulation to the Voltron set that came out pretty recently. So, check that out. But let's go ahead and Thinking move on. Thinking emoji. Hmm? Mm. No, I'm just like, 
thinking emoji. Okay. Mesa, it's not simply a matter of... Okay. You know what? <laughs> we should have Tooth Dominoes on one of these days to discuss no, totally. it. I want him to, yeah, like, to talk get, to you about it. as a guest alongside Tooth Dominoes? Okay. We're going to move on now. I'm just joking. What do you want I to completely talk? Believe, what, what I completely you... believe Tooth Dominoes that he tried everything he could. My argument is not that the set designers need to do better. It's to, like I need to invest in creating a more sturdy joint type. Fair That's enough. I think it, it is still no. a legitimate criticism. So, yeah. Okay. Next up, um, let's talk about the Aston Martin car. Aston Martin. Like I was teasing the heck out of that, and like midway through their teasing of the set, it got leaked. Um, and obviously, we didn't talk about it because we don't talk about leaks anymore. But like. It, the, their teasing continued for almost an additional week to two weeks after this set already got leaked and everyone knew what it was going to look like. It's like, eh. All right. The set's gotten very lukewarm reception. I would say mixed would to say. positive. I'd say lukewarm. Almost all the top comments on Brick Set are talking about how terrible it looks. Yeah, that well, looks terrible. Kids have impressed. I, Price I, tag far too much. Looks terrible and it's expensive. It looks too angular and blocky. I just can't get excited over this car. Make it go away, please. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, a lot of the folks on Brickset are possibly of the mindset of its creator that Bionicle isn't an actual Lego theme. So I'm not exactly gonna take a lot of those comments at face value. Thank it's you. a real achievement to take one of the most beautiful cars ever made and make a model so ugly does Lego have no quality control. <laughs> Holy guacamole, it's not that bad! Another lump of gray plastic from Lego! <laughs> My. Horrific, truly horrific. Clearly the pursuit of ugly has spread from Technic Porsche Bugatti and is now a company-wide thing. <laughs> okay, you've got to be kidding me. I, I gotta like. I, are we looking at the same thing? Like yeah, where we can look we just at... start like reading Brickset comments, snobby comments. Yeah, looks Gosh, cheap. Uh... Photoshopped photos are much better. <laughs> what is okay, that? Even can we mean? actually talk about it so we can move on? <laughs> my gosh. Okay, fine. Thank you. Uh, I mean, listen, my. I kind of agree, but then again, I also don't. It looks like a car, you know. Yes, it's a little blocky. Yes, it's rectangular. Yes, it's Lego. And a lot of the pieces are squares and or rectangles. If you're not into that, perhaps buy a different... Uh, perhaps buy a different kind of model. <laughs> it isn't square or blocky by design. How's about an actual car model? Yeah. Yeah, like, like not a Lego set. Yes, I recognize that there are sloped pieces in Lego and that they have known to make curvature and, you know, all, all those shapes very nicely. But I also recognize that sometimes for a car to have the foundation and to have the shape, you have to build it up to a certain degree to where if you wanted it to have a sloping look, the car would need to be bigger, if that makes any sense because then you'd have more room to kind of incrementally edge up the angles and the slopes. But for this size and this, you know, size bracket, there's only so much they can actually do um, on the small scale. And I think they did a good enough job. Like the front is, is totally sloped. It has slopes aplenty. The sides, slopes. It just goes inward and not down the length of the car. You know what I mean? The slopes mm -hmm. turn inward to create the rounded shape. It's okay. Um, would I buy it for $150? Not in my wildest dream, even if I was a James Bond fan. But would... Because I, I do kind of echo, like, yeah, just another, another blocky gray vehicle. But as has been pointed out in the comments, that's accurate. If they were going to make this set, it had to be in gray doesn't come in any other colors. Yeah. So. No. I yeah. think there are some instances where Lego vehicles aren't as good as they could be. The example that comes immediately to mind is the one from Back to the Future, the, the, the uh, DeLorean. And you see a lot of mods that fans make to it 
where they make it better. They make it a little bit larger. Not a whole lot is done to it to make it better, to improve it. The thing with this is that I'm, I don't know what else could have been done. I haven't seen anyone do anything to it yet, but I I cannot People imagine... People just want more rounded pieces. I but guess. I can't imagine it either because they already do that. They already have them on the front. They have them on the sides. They have them on the back as well. But what people want is it to be more gradual because they're saying that it looks too... It's too abrupt as it stands. But in order to make it a more gradual tapering, the car would need to be bigger, which would make it into a different price bracket. Yeah. I, I can that understand the critique. It just seems... I don't, I don't know. I think the value of the car is far greater than these small details that LEGO obviously tried to get right, and I think to a large degree did, because the car has features to it. It has a lot of fascinating features. Because it's a James Bond car, which I have my own opinions on anyway, it's got all the cool gadgets. Like, it's got these things that come out of the wheels. i got a picture on the screen right now. It's got an ejector seat. Like, that's crazy. That's awesome. It's got so many cool features. I think that's wonderful. It should have a minifigure. Uh, I find it baffling that it doesn't. Uh, uh, they have guns. Just make a minifigure. Uh, well, the guns are not the issue. I mean, it, it's more so... It feels incomplete without a minifigure. I mean, does it? I don't know if it's minifigure scale, is it? Uh -huh. Hogwarts Castle ain't minifigure scale, and they still put in four minifigures. Oh my goodness! Listen, yeah. I guess while we're while we're talking about about that, we went to the guns. Here's one more comment that's hilarious that will then bridge into a discussion. If the model is not supposed to represent a particular car and a beautiful one at that, and if it was forty or so less, it would be interesting. The description in the release that states features the smooth curves and sleek edges of the original Aston Martin BB5 is borderline delusional. <laughs> that written, the most amazing aspect to me is the inclusion of, and I quote, front wing machine guns. Oh my gosh, you're a robot. You're a robot. It's about to be a one-man show. <laughs> so... <laughs> nope. We've lost him, everyone. Oh, wait. I hear typing. Oh. We're both robots. Well, this is, um... This is interesting. Uh... Da -da 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 -da. All right. Messa? Hello. Hey, there we go. I fixed it. Did you? I think it was a Discord thing. I don't know if you could fix it. Because I it changed. It was fine on YouTube. Oh, okay. Cool. Awesome. Well, to everyone, to everyone listening, that was a really awkward series of events. But we're kind of flying with duct tape and and bubble gum. Well done. Let's hope Discord it doesn't completely crash on this mid podcast. That would be awful. Uh, so we got we got to chew through this quickly then. All right. And I was saying, the most amazing aspect to me is the inclusion of front-wing machine guns. Does TLG reconcile this with their long-standing ban on modern weaponry by classifying Bond as fantasy, or is it symptomatic of a change in philosophy? It's a little bit of both. Isn't it? Go on. I mean, I, I haven't seen anything to indicate they'd be classifying it as fantasy. Well, it's a realistic thing with a realistic interpretation. It's realistic, but it's not real, you know. And, and let, well, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think there's an actual Aston Martin vehicle out there with working machine guns in it. True enough. Like, it's 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 a fantasy car. All these gadgets aren't in an actual vehicle, right? If if they are, true enough. Yeah. Tell me. But you know, it's a film. It's fiction. So. Mm -hmm. That, I mean, I can understand how they would be able to. The other thing is, yeah, there is an obvious change in Lego's philosophy. It's been going on for decades. It's... Hashtag Lego Overwatch. Yeah, 
I mean, Lego Overwatch is the latest example of that, but it's been going on since they acquired Star Wars. You know, blasters. Then Bionicle pew, with pew, weapons, even though they were called tools, but I digress. You know, yeah, they were. It's been going on for so very long. It's obvious enough. And the thing with contemporary weapons is I'm fairly certain I recall Lego specifically being against contemporary war weapons. So they they don't want to see AR-15, or well, no, they don't want to see M-16s. That's a war weapon. An M-16, they don't want to see an AK-47. They don't want to see an, you know, an M-4 carbine or stuff from Call of Duty, stuff from Battle f Battlefield. That's the I kind of stuff Lego... Lego okay. That's the kind of stuff Lego are not going to have in, in their their sets. But these are literally so just two, like, sticks. You can't identify them as anything. What's that gun that starts with O? Do you know of anything? Let me Google it. Guns that start with O. I'm going somewhere with this. I'm hoping you are, but I can't think of any. Okay, there's an OKB575. I want my leg OKB575. There was nothing about that that was worth speaking. There's an Arita M1941. We're Lego done. Arita M1941. We're done. We're done. <laughs> done. done. All right. But anyway, it's that that's the thing. It's like in they don't want contemporary war weapons. But two sticks? You got to be kidding me. That's not going to kill a brand. Fair enough. So, now let's the, move on to the next thing. Yeah, no. Uh, oh no, go on. No, no, no. I was just going to get in a spiel about it. it's James Bond, which is a really unlegoish license to have. That's true. They are by nature expanding their reach, which is mm -hmm. peculiar, but we'll see where it goes. Yeah. All right, what's next? I want to mention the Porg briefly, because it's hilarious. Okay, go ahead, it's on screen. Okay, so like I was making a Porg. No further details are provided. Uh, the news broke from a Ukrainian toy shop. And just for good old time's sake, let me find the website's name. Wow, I expected something long and hard to pronounce. It's buy.ua. Where I posted a listing for the Constructor Lego Star Wars Porg. It's going to come out uh, for £70 pounds in Germany in October. And that's nice for Germany, but I want to know when it's coming in the US. Which we don't know yet. <laughs> but this thing looks to be pretty in-depth. I mean, the question is why? Why are they doing a UCS Porg? I guess because it makes money. Porgs <laughs> do. Like for merch. But I can't imagine why. But I mean, it's a cool design set. The back in particular has really good texture. And I don't know what that piece is. I actually I think, think it might be new. I was about to say, I think it's new. Yeah, but it's a really cool looking piece. I, I think, honestly... I wasn't a big fan of the Porgs. Not necessarily because I thought they were obnoxious, but because they were in The Last Jedi. And I'm not I thought they were that. very transparent. I mean, like, I guess... The Ewoks were toy potential in the first movies, but they also had like a role in the plot to justify their existence. And the Porgs do not. They're literally just very shallow. And they're just there to be cute and sell toys. And they also were there... Um, it was most horrible because they reduced Chewbacca to just being the pork sidekick. Yeah, no, that's so fair. That's, but that's a discussion for another day. Yeah, I think I, I feel like I would I would not mind them as much if now I'm not saying JJ Abrams that this is an amazing idea and that I call dibs on this one. So I'll I'll be expecting a royalty check in the mail soon. But for the next movie, if they have one specific porg and they call him Oogly, an Oogly. He, like, runs up to whoever's fighting. They need their lightsaber, and he, like, has a lightsaber in his mouth. He runs up, like, here, have the lightsaber. And Jedi's like, yeah, that's right, Oogly. Now get out of here. Get to safety. And then there's, like, this awesome lightsaber duel that takes place. I think, at that point, awesome. Porgs, I'm on Porg the... On board. Is there a reference Porgs. to something? No, this is just my idea. Anyway... <laughs> Star Wars, Star Wars aficionado and everyone's favorite mute Hawkeye says in the chat, 
Yeah, but you know why they're there, Slash? They're there because they couldn't get rid of the puffins. Yeah, I totally realized they were filming a scene with Chewbacca, like by a campfire. <laughs> and they were just trying to have a deep, introspective Chewbacca scene. But like those dang puffins kept going in the <laughs> shot. So they had to like edit them to be porgs <laughs> just to get the scene to work. <laughs> or, or later on, when Chewbacca's flying the Millennium Falcon, like some puffins flew into the prop while they were on the island. <laughs> And they couldn't get them out in like a humane way, so they had to like they'd edit them. That totally makes sense. <laughs> I can just, I can sense Keeny just boiling over right now. <laughs> yeah, they edited them and just rolled it. They'd be like, no freaking duh. <laughs> Like, just because they had a reason doesn't mean they weren't like marketing props and that wasn't what they became. That's like saying some some supervillain's justification for committing mass murder doesn't make them a supervillain. One does not one does not beget the other. <laughs> also, uh, it's fine, Kitty. I'm just dramatizing in the hopes you'll unmute to yell at me. It's okay. I know you won't. 30 seconds, I was tempted. Try harder. <laughs> See, I don't know if that counts as an appearance. Like, would I have him listed as... as... Shrug. <sighs> Only if he speaks again. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I'll, I'll say the cameo, but not an appearance. Fair, fair enough. enough. No, it's fair it's enough. Anyway. Say it like a normal person. Yeah, pork, pork set's cool. Um, I would actually consider getting it if they had disposable money, which I do not. I would not get one, it. One for the meme, and two because it's legitimately well designed. It looks very cool. It is very well um, designed. I think for what the subject matter is, it's unbelievably well built. I think it's it's very well done. Yeah. So. Okay. What next? Well, we only have... One or two things more. I mean, I want to talk about Ninjaga at some point. Ninjaga I mean, there's not a whole lot, is there? Let's talk about the Lego movie two sets real quick. Okay. We'll do that phrase. Three sets were revealed from the Lego movie two at SDCC 2018. We got, I think, Ultra Kitty is what they're calling it. Um, I'm not sure the exact set names. The Brick Set article doesn't seem to tell them, but one is Sweet Mayhem Starship retailing for $70. One is Ultra Kitty, which I think it's for 30 Don't quote me on that. Um, and then there's some kind of super generic monster truck that Emmett and Lucy are driving. <coughs> um, yeah. And honestly, they look really cool. Okay. Let's let's chew through these because we actually do have a lot to get through. Um, with these specifically, more so, more so one, actually. Let me get okay. a better article for specifics. You let me down this time, Brickset. I won't lie. Okay, here we go. Much better article on uh, from bricks to both ends. Okay, so let's talk about the Unikini first. Uh, this is set number 70827, Ultra Kitty and Warrior Lucy. And this set is going to retail for about 30 in the United States. Nice, I was right. <clears throat> yes. Um, I think this is wonderful. It's a great set. I think that I, I like that they're running with the angry kitty cat thing, but really building that up. Like, this looks like a wonderful set. And I, I, I'm a sucker for Lego, you know, different Lego systems being built in system so having duplo in system is kind of funny to me mm -hmm. so i think this is good i like this yeah i mean this set just looks super cool and i would honestly consider getting it i might it's reasonably priced it's got a lot of cool parts a lot of good articulation and the two main minifigures so it's, it's, it's super cool yeah, I, I probably wouldn't get this personally. Not because it's bad or anything or I dislike it. It's just not 
personally something that I'm interested in. I need to see more. Mm hmm. That's totally <clears throat> fair. All right. If you have anything, anything else before we move on to the next one? Um, no. Okay, good. So the next one, set number 70829, Emmett and Lucy's Escape Buggy. Set in... Generic. Re will not be getting it. Okay, it retails for about $50. And uh, I don't cool. see the part count anywhere right now. Uh, yeah, it's not too interesting to me. We've seen buggies of this type before. It looks almost exactly like that one Batmobile from the Lego Batman movie. Yeah, and I know what you're thinking. Like man bat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I actually, uh, no, nah, I'm wrong. I just looked up. It, it's not, it, it's only similar in the fact that it has four huge wheels. The actual design isn't similar. But it reminds me, it's a very derivative kind of vehicle. It, it, the uh, concept. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I know exactly yeah, what like, you mean. That's sand blue, because that's cool at least. Yes, that is sand blue. All right. Yeah. Thumbs up. I think it, it it's it's well built. It looks good. It's not interesting to me. I like a metal beard. Eh. He looks I, cool down he, there. He's a beard in a chest. You know, yeah, I've seen that before. Cool. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Last one. This is the one that's got a lot of people talking. This is 70830 Sweet Mayhem's Sistar Starship. The set. I figure you might, you might know more about this than I do. Probably. Set retails for $70. I don't know what the part count is. I need to find that first. Um, because a lot of the controversy surrounding the set is the piece count. And sorry, not the piece count, the price count. Alright, well let's see. Sweet Mayhem so Star Starship. Let yep. me see. Let's see if any one of the fans can find it before us. Brick set does not list a piece count. Okay. For what that's worth. The Brick fan has an article. They do not list the peak count, so I'm guessing it does not exist yet. I swear I'd seen it somewhere. Huh. Oh, here we go. Found it. Okay. Uh, it's not on a website. It's in a Discord server. 496 pieces. Oh, my God. 496 pieces. The set costs $70. And it looks so cool. It's a great looking set. The set looks fantastic. And it's got an interesting function, which I'll get into in just a moment. But those are that that's not a lot of parts. So I saw a picture. I think I know what, what, what the controversy yes, is. Yes, okay. So, well, that's we'll the controversy. It. Here's the explanation. Um, it's got a sticker roll. It has uh -huh. a function in the set. Now I'll post a picture. It's got a roll of stickers coming out of the back. Okay. Now, I don't know what the relevance of that is. I don't know why it's there. I, I vaguely recall something from one of the trailers. But... I mean, little kids like stickers to just play with. <laughs> that, that's the thing, though. I mean, the set's incredible. You not only have teal, you got a, it's a stellar color scheme. You've got the main characters. You've got that uh, sweet mayhem person. It, it's a great-looking set. It's incredibly well-designed. But for barely 500 pieces, $70... That's crazy to me. We They're... have shifted from licensing premiums to sticker premiums. <laughs> this is like 2018. Yeah, now, to be fair, that part count is something that it, it was in. It was something that was mentioned 
in a Discord server. I'm still not finding a solid source on that, although I'm still looking. So you mean there's hope? There is a possibility that it might have more pieces than we are being led to believe, but at this... What was the, what was the piece count again? Like 496. All right. So, but that's the scoop. That's the controversy. It's a great set, but as it stands, there's a, a super high chance that it is unbelievably overpriced. Hmm. Well, that's no good. I found a source on a site called JediJackPenguin.com. That source is it, but that's about all I can say. Okay, fair enough. I don't know what that site is. I don't either. So. All right. Well, it's the kind of thing I might consider getting if it goes on shale. On, on shale. shale. Okay, on Sean, Sean Connery. If it goes on shale. shale. No, I would like, I, I'm not about the sticker premium life, but it does look like a good set. So yeah. credit where credit's due. Yeah. No, it looks like an incredible set. I'm stuck. Fair enough. Oh my gosh. So now, okay. I guess we can move on to the final thing. Last thing. Okay. Go for it. So SDCC 2018, they had a Ninjago panel. And some news came out about Ninjago. And it's like, that's so well... <laughs> I can't make it a single Hello, gosh dang episode. Starting the episode out, having the minifigures there, and then somebody else comes in, eh, almost to the end. If you, if you and waited makes... like 10 seconds, I was going to be like, oh, well, we, we, we didn't get what we were hoping for in the Ninjago movie, too. Instead, we got something super lame, Jay a wedding, but you can know it. I'm so. Lame. So. <laughs> Angry. <laughs> Man, I was expecting LJ to just scream. Yeah, me too. We had a Trust me, I'm building up to it. So, okay. welcome, Haley. <laughs> Hi. Um, SDCC. Everyone was expecting. All right. So, what are we gonna get from SDCC? Oh, because Tommy was using like a big announcement. Is it just gonna be the voice actors coming? Is it gonna be, you know? confirmation of this Ninjago re-releasing older set rumor for 2019? Is it gonna be Ninjago Movie 2? What's it gonna be? Instead, it ended up being a special about the 100th episode. Essentially, we're getting a four-episode special that is not season 10. It's going to be some currently... There's gonna be a title for it. We just don't know what it is. Celebrating Ninjago's episode 100 which, frustratingly, is episode 98. <laughs> which is going to bother me until the day I die because they're episode counting the pilots. The 100th episode. It's so stupid because they're counting the pilots, which don't have episode numbers. It's maddening, but... but they are important to this show. And they're they're, the departed they're counting isn't. the pilots, but not Day of the Departed. Just goes, <laughs> just goes to show how much Cole means... <laughs> That's true. Oh, oh. Cole okay, is basically, bye. he's chopped liver. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> so, they announced four episodes coming early-ish 2019, and it's going to be about Jay and Nia's wedding question mark. They're yin-yanging, whatever they end up calling it, because they're doing this whole, will you be the yin to my yang? shtick, which implies to me that it is not a traditional wedding, because I was very skeptical that LEGO would ever do that in like a show. It's going to be Ninjago's equivalent, just like Day of the Departed was kind of a made-up celebration in Ninjago's realm. But it, it's basically a wedding. Well, I don't um, know if they're going to show the wedding. No, of course they won't, because it's not going to be a traditional wedding. Her. Yeah. It'll be a Ninjago thing, a Ninjago version, probably with a lot of lanterns, no wedding dress, you know, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Uh, mm -hmm. Guys, episode one has a number. It is numbered. Rise of the Snakes. No, no. Episode one, Way of the Ninja. 
Magic Ninja just posted a picture of it. Where is that picture from? I don't know. I didn't take the picture. Oh, yeah. Then wait. Then what's... Well, Rise of Snakes wait is also episode one. What the... THERE IS A SEASON! SEASON ONE! <laughs> Where, do you source... the Where do you source that? Well, it's part of the episode count, but it's weird because it's not part of the episode count. There's like two episodes, but then they start over episode one. Ninjago, what's going on here? I mean, just Ninjago was weird in the early days. Just chalk it up to... Uh... Just chalk we it up are to... on season ten! Oh my god. Ten! <laughs> so. Pilot one. Pilot one. Episode. Pilot one. It begins with episode. Episode one. Yes, but also Rise of the Snakes is also called. Great, one. that's fantastic. Rise of the Snakes, season two, episode one. What more do you want? Because, I, I don't know, because they keep continuing. It's not like season six starts with episode This one. is the strongest uh, argument entire. I have Your had language. in years. Uh, Your language keeps continuing. This is, but it doesn't make any sense. It makes like, sense. Oh, we're about to get like more episodes, but it doesn't count in a season. Like, doesn't so, seem to you know, make much sense. <laughs> eh. Ninjago, Gosh. what's going on? Relent! I mean, Relent! Ninjago, it's nin season one! Nin nin Ninjago is weird. Let's just... Yeah. Let's just end it there for now. That. But point point That's... being, for some reason, they have retconned this episode number out of existence because, mm -hmm. according to Tommy, who is word of word of law, you know, at the moment, it's episode ninety eight will be episode one hundred, which will mm. haunt me until the day I die. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, my current theory is that that will be the explanation for why they're going to be re-releasing the older sets which has still not been confirmed, but it's a rumor that persists. Because if it's going to be a 100th episode celebration, a four-episode arc, then that's their way of honoring the past by, you know, releasing updated versions. Maybe if we're lucky, it won't just be re-releases, but it'll be, like, a few sets from the old storylines that we never got, like mm -hmm. the Overlord Dragon or the Monastery. You know, that'd be super yeah. cool. Yeah. It's very interesting that they're back in the Monastery based off of that clip. It was rebuilt and everything. Like nine seasons to rebuild the monastery. Yeah, there has to be a reason but, for that. So that. Well, I guess the, the Destiny's bounty was just destroyed, so they don't really. Oh, yeah, we were talking about the other night. Tell the audience how many, how many times the Destiny's bounty has been destroyed. For anyone who doesn't read our Ninjago sub chat. Nine. Nine times. Magic Punch Ninja and I, we both recounted all the times that it was destroyed. You and guys are wrong. Then Apprentice. <laughs> well, maybe if you drop it, uh, Apprentice said or made it clear that it uh, <laughs> it was destroyed at like three times in six months. Three yeah. times. It's some bad <laughs> business. It was destroyed ten oh, times. Yeah. Why is it ten times? The movie. <laughs> I included the movie. Oh, okay, never mind. It was nine times. Fair <laughs> enough. Well done. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all that was revealed at, uh, at SDCC. All those J.O. shippers out there are very happy right now. And all the people that do not ship J.O. are not very happy, as you can yeah. attest. All the Tumblr wars. Wait, who doesn't ship J.O.? The, the show ships J.O. <laughs> that's, that's the discussion. Yeah. No, isn't it? Some people don't enjoy the relationship as much as others. They feel like it's poorly written. Uh, the fact that they're teenagers and he's asking her to, like, quote unquote, marry her is a little the interesting. Older teens. But they're nineteen, eighteen. Yeah. yeah. Like that. That's that's. You gotta remember, LJ, that a lot of people are still clinging on to the last vestiges of Cole and Nia. And or spinning wild and crazy crack ships like Skylar and Nia, uh, who I've seen but, but guys, actually it's, being teased, despite it, them having barely any interaction. Guys, it's, it's pretty obvious. Uh, Nia and Lloyd, they, they need to be a thing. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Nia and Lloyd. I, 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 I just, I just <laughs> say Nia and I just say Nia and Lloyd. They're totally meant to be together. No, it should totally be Nia and Kai. 
That's an awful other K. I'm never say that again. I, I will allow it. If you, yeah, people actually ship them. What? <laughs> I've seen it. Are they from the south? Well, oh, you guys are. Anything. And that's an insult. It oh. is. That is correct. It is. I'm I'm lauding my northern superiority over you, you two. All right. I will. Ma Magic no. Ninja just posted scales x Pythor, and now I'm like done. I don't, I don't want this to be <laughs> no, The yeah. real ship is Morumi. That's the real ship that I'm hopping on. Morumi is picking Morumi. up. Speed. Okay. All right. It's odd take two people to die, and then suddenly they're fair game. We are <laughs> moving on. Otherwise, I'm going to. Confirms... It confirms that Harumi's dead, by the way. I am going to sink these ships like the Titanic. Like the Destiny's Bounty, you mean? <laughs> it's been destroyed so many times. Might so as well. get her out of here, or else there will be heck Aww. to pay. I mean, she's already here. She can stay out for the end. <laughs> oh, no, wait. I can go. Wait. Yeah, okay. Good. Well, okay, there's a little more. <laughs> okay. Uh, someone asked, Tommy, will these four episodes have a new intro, or will it be like the 40-minute specials with no intro? And he says, it will be some sort of intro unlike anything Ninjago has ever had before. Hmm. And as Ninja Guy Yo posted on Tumblr, Despacito Overture Whip Three yeah. confirmed. And that's been Brickfeed episode ninety nine. Everyone. <laughs> oh, wait, there's one more thing. One more thing. What? What is it? it? Ninjago says that they're going to be. There's going to have six plus hours of uh, Ninjago this upcoming year. <laughs> I'm glad oh, yeah. Ninjago said that. Where do you... Ninjago, <laughs> yes. Ninjago, Ninjago, the corporation, the person said that um as in the screen said it and which means four plus episodes only accounts for 88 minutes so roughly an hour and a half of six plus hours which means season 10 is either going to be really freaking long or both season 10 and 11 will come out next year which is insane well not in 11 because that's going to be like nine plus hours you don't know so... if each if each mm -hmm. season is 10 episodes yeah that's, that's like Three, but three if what if they were eight episodes? True, if they could be, they could be eight. Didn't think of that. We'll see. Boom. But yeah, we got now. So yeah, that's either we're gonna get a long season or there's gonna be more than just Too season ten. Seasons. Yeah. So now you may end, Belja. Thank goodness. Oh, wait, one more thing. Magic asked Tommy Anderson about the origins of the Overlord after the panel, and he said that there might be something in the next few episodes, but nothing definite. So there you go. Okay. Oh, wait, one more thing. Oh. Someone also asked if the four episodes were going to have any relation to seasons eight and nine, and Tommy says, yes, it will end that story. Think of it as the conclusion of, like, a 24-episode arc. Which is a very a very baffling statement to say, oh, because no. I don't see how Jaya's wedding would have anything to do with the Oni, unless no my personal headcanon. No, you might know where I'm going with this. Uh, no. What if the wedding happens uh -huh. and it's revealed that Jay or Nia has been an Oni all along? Oh, that be or funny. has gotten replaced by an Oni at some point, and they try to kill the other person. Because they've cool. already set that up. I don't think could be posing as any one of us. I'm just saying. Kaz ships Nia and die. <laughs> <laughs> top, top comment. Unbelievable. All right. All right, now you may end. Wait, one more thing, one more thing, one more thing. Wait, really? Are you just memeing or not? Ninjago's awesome. And I'm <laughs> deleting every single episode of the Let's Play that you've been allowed to see early right now. Okay, on. Wow. No! <laughs> and banning you from the channel, the TTV message boards, and blocking you. She didn't you on even Twitter. do anything, and you're banning her. <laughs> she doesn't even have a message anyway. board account. Haley, you have to. <gasps> Wait, what? Okay, you know, fine, whatever. I'm not anyway, sure. she might. Haley, you have to unmute you... because this counts as an episode appearance, so I'm going to need you to outro too. So, okay, anyway. Thank you all so very much for listening. There's one thing I want to do. We usually don't do Patreon shout outs on uh, Brickfeed. I don't know why, necessarily. Probably because TTV. Got it. But because it's her birthday. Happy birthday, Magic Ninja. Thank you for giving us the coverage on SDCC when it was happening. I hope you've had a good day and enjoyed the podcast. Happy 
Happy birthday, Ninja. Yeah. Happy birthday. With that out of the way, oh, let's go ahead and wrap. I hope it was magical. I don't know if yeah, this is the right music or not, but I'm going to use it anyway. A good question. Anyway. Okay, good. I'm turning it down, though. Thank you all so very much for listening to yet another episode of the Brick Feed Podcast. This has been episode 99. The next time, whenever that happens, is going to be the big one zero zero. Oh, yeah! Woo! Anyway, thank you so very much for listening. Make sure to check, out, check us out on Patreon and subscribe or not subscribe. Donate a dollar a month to be a part of the Patreon live chat and to get the shirts back. I've been LJ. I've been Mesa. And I've been Haley for a short amount of time. Yeah, enough to warrant a guest appearance or, or spotlight thing. Anyway, uh, see ya. Bye.